Howdy folks, Nathan Adlin here with the Fast Lane Car, and this is another episode of Ask Nathan. Now I've brought you back here to the TFL studio slash garage uh, to have, well, frankly, a peek at two special guests, and that's these two cars. Now I'll get to these in just a minute. It's going to be pretty cool. But also, I brought you back here to answer a few of your questions and also to remind you, don't forget to go to tflcar.com because right now there is coverage of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. It's a really big race. Now, on to some of the stuff that uh, you guys have asked. Yes, I'm using my phone because I don't want to be archaic and use paper. Okay, so the first question is, is Ford making the Bronco yes or no? Guys, I, I wish I could tell you for sure. And here's the crazy part. You ask Ford and they flightly say no. Absolutely not. They're not doing it. You ask all the fanboys and they say yes, yes, they're doing it. We're somewhere in the middle. We've been looking for prototypes. We hear they're out there running around. Everybody's speculating that the Rangers platform will be used for the Bronco. And there's another vehicle called the Ford Everest, which is being built overseas. And that might hold some cues as to what they're doing with the Bronco. It actually might be a similar type of setup, which is basically a small truck SUV. So I wish I could tell you more. We're going to keep our eyes out for that vehicle because if they're testing, most likely they're going to be testing up here in our backyard. Okay, so the next question. Which car company has the sexiest cars? All right, well, I'm sure a lot of you would probably agree with me that the Italians are beautiful, you know, Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Uh, McLaren builds some beautiful cars, but my personal favorite in terms of sexy cars, Aston Martin. Visually, they're stunning, just beautiful. They m just look like rolling lust. So there you go. That's, that's my answer. And by the way, don't forget to put your answer, your responses, and also your questions down below. And I promise you, we'll be reading every single one of them. Uh, if there are other questions for the next episode, we'll grab a couple of those and a couple that are sent via text, uh, email, Twitter, you name it. Okay, and let's see here. The next question. Oh, this one I want to save to the end. You guys are going to love it because I think that you guys are going to have a very different take than mine. But the next question is, do you have any information about the replacement for the... Oh! <laughs> for the Cadillac CTSV. No. No, as far as I know, this CTSV is pretty much uh, brand new. So, no information about a replacement. Fortunate for them, they actually have the um, big Escalade, and the Escalade always sells. Okay. Now, before I get to the final question, let me tell you about these guys. This is a brand spanking new Lexus IS 200 Turbo. Uh, it's uh, reverent. I love it. I just love this car. And I'll be driving it against that car. And that's the Infiniti Q50. It has a 2 liter turbo. This has a 2 liter turbo. They're both rear drive. And Roman and I are going to take these to a racetrack. And we're going to see which one is quicker and we're going to see which one is more fun to drive around the track. I just love that. See, this is the best part of my job is being able to do stuff like that. Okay, final question. Now, this is one that I want you guys to answer as well. So if you're watching this, think about it and throw your answers below. I'm sure they'll be interesting. So the question is, if you had $100,000 to spend on five cars for a poor man's dream garage, which five cars would they be? So I actually had to research this a little bit just to see, you know, if I can come close to $100,000. Basically, that means nothing super exotic like a P1, but, well, here we go. So my top five, hold your laughter until the end, the 1970 Fiat 124 Coupe. I love that car. 1985 Peugeot 205 GTI. 1977 Jeep Cherokee Chief with the, yeah, the 360 with the manual transmission. Oh, yeah. Always wanted one of those. The Citron du Chavo, for those of you who don't know, think Volkswagen Beetle, but even more primitive. And the 1987-ish Mitsubishi Montero with the three doors. Uh, some of these cars I've actually owned before, and I've always wanted to buy them back again so I could keep them. I have reasons for loving them all, and I calculated roughly that good examples of all five of those vehicles would come out to just under $100,000. So I'm hoping that you guys will come up with your own list of vehicles that you would get for $100,000, and 
write them below. I'll definitely check them out. All right, well, that's pretty much it. Once again, don't forget to go to tflcar.com to look at all the updates for racing, especially with Pikes Peak. And keep in mind, we are doing video after video after video just for you guys. If you have any suggestions, go ahead and write them below. Welcome to another episode of TFL's Leaderboard Hot or Not. And I'm Roman Mike, and I'm an automotive journalist. And I'm Paul Gerard, and I'm a professional driver. That's right, and today we've got something really special. Sometimes we've got brand new cars, and sometimes we've got cars that are, well, interesting. How would you describe the Velocity, Paul? Uh, well, the name, I think, says it all, doesn't it? Yes, indeed. <laughs> so it's, it's, you know, it's kind of a car, and actually in the name is also EXO, so it's like an EXO. <laughs> 